this is this is this is so weird like taking our regular conversations that we have on a daily basis to sit down somewhere so formal with clothes on and talk to each other. <laughs> no. It just seems so unnatural. You gotta so, yeah. set it up. And I know. We just spent like 20 minutes of getting things set up. And it's crazy to me because when thoughts and feelings and come through you, you want to get it out. Yep. So I'm not able to have those fluid conversations with you anymore because I'm like, oh, wait till we <laughs> sit down. We go, yeah. oh, I got some heat. Yeah. I got some fire. I got some things I really want to express. But then we sit down. We set up momentum, but we got to get it back. Together, I know right? you gotta, you gotta bring it. It goes down. You gotta bring it back up. <laughs> yeah. So I guess that's a good way to jump off this conversation. Is like, how do you keep motivation and momentum up when you have obstacles in your way? Yeah. You know, are you still in the groove? Do you still have the drive to continue? Are you able to pick up and keep going? Are you able to be intrinsically motivated to get to where to that space where you were at? I think you said it. it's it's intrinsic because if it comes from the exterior, that's going to constantly change. And like you said, well, I don't feel like it today or, you know, something came up. It, it's always going to be something that can stop it from the outside. But if it's from the inside, that means nothing can stop it. Nothing. From the outside. Nothing basically. can stop it. it. I mean, it may pause it. Yep. It may put it in queue. Yep. But you get up and you start running at the same pace that you were running in the first place. Yeah. So that's that's the metaphor for life. Like we are getting, and then it's like um, even with like developing like a new habit. Like this mm -hmm. is a new habit. Like it's a it's a derivative of the habit we already had. Yep. Exactly. So to introduce ourselves, so for uh, I'll just say for the past two years, it's been a lot going on in the past two years. But we develop a, a habit of spending time with God, learning the Word in the morning. And then we'll review and have a conversation or we'll stop and pause and we'll be like, wow, this is this really spoke to me. Yeah. I really have a strong opinion about it. Let's let's talk about it. Let's connect about it. Mm -hmm. And like I wanna say, like last year we were like, yo, we should do a podcast and we should uh, bring our notes of our takeaways from some great sermons and speakers that we hear yeah. to uh, to connect with others to let them know how we resonate. So that idea stemmed and grew and you went out on faith and got us all this good stuff set up here where we can go for it and do the podcast so we plan on bringing you guys that and also just sharing our thoughts that are just coming through us that's it <laughs> yeah so that's pretty much it and we got everything ready to go and like you said it's just keeping that momentum and it reminded me of Remember, like, uh, when Cat Williams was talking about the little boy and he gave him the medicine. <laughs> what you think about running? <laughs> if that didn't stop, the thought the thought the was thought still there. Stop. Even though he wasn't moving, he still was thinking about running. Like yeah, that's, that's, what that, that's the way we have to be. It right. doesn't matter. Like, I mean, you made me just come to this point, too. Like, I could just tell this good story. So uh, I started going to college back in the day, mm -hmm. and life happened. We got married young. We needed money. We had to work. And all these different obstacles came in my life yep. where... I couldn't go like I wanted to, but that passion never left me. Like I always just tell Robert, I gotta go back to school. I mm -hmm. gotta go back to school. And like no matter what I was doing, I never felt settled in my spirit. Yeah. Because that's something I really pursue, wanted to pursue. And I was working retail jobs and crazy hours, but mm -hmm. that thought and that passion never left me. Yeah. And was interesting enough, I got one big obstacle in the way when I finally got all my transcripts. Remember, we had to go find my transcripts. Mm -hmm. We had to do the FedEx thing. We had to get courses. I mean, it was a lot of red tape getting our loans back in um, the right yep. standing. Yep. So it was a lot of red tape to get me back in school. But then there was one thing. Um, was it the 2008 like layoffs? Mm, oh, yeah. yeah, and I had a choice. <laughs> I had a choice whether to get that check yep. Or continue to go to school. I wasn't going to be able to collect my unemployment if I went back to school. I chose school and yep. God provided. There you go. So I stepped out on faith. I didn't say, oh, I need this money. I said, I need to pursue my passion. So sometimes in your passion, you will get challenged. You will get a roadblock. That's not really a roadblock. It's just a test of your faith. There you go. So you got to stand on business and go for what you know. And guess what? That door going to open. Yep. If you, if you jump, the net going to appear. 
I, I'm a, I am a living witness to that. So I need to remind myself of those different scenarios and show gratitude and, and know even like this, you jumped, you bought this stuff, the, yeah. the net gone up here. And speaking of, like you said, um, to take a risk or to try something that you've never tried before, it reminds me of something we just watched. What? with Kevin Hart when he was ah. talking about gambling. We watched the Mark Twain, when he won the Mark Twain Award on Netflix. Check that out, that was, it was it, really good. So good, so good. <laughs> it was outstanding. So good, it was funny. But he talked about that, like like you said, so you had a choice to make between ah, continuing to work yeah. or yeah. like uh, finishing, going back to school. And either way, it's a, it's a gamble to, to go back and do something that, you know, you're not gonna make any money, but in the long run, it's like he kind of said that it doesn't matter either way, but if you don't take the risk, what's the point of living life? If you're not going to take the risk, like that's what we're here for, to take risks, to try to, things, to gamble. Absolutely. And and just a, it's just so cliche. Like we all have one life to live. Like yep. you don't want a life full of regrets. And it's supposed to be fun. It's supposed to be challenging. It's a ride. Like you there have you to have the dips and turns and, and what ifs and whatnot. Like what if it was perfect? There you go. What if it was it's stagnant? It's not a good movie. It's, it's not a good movie. We all, that's the best analogy. I, I want my movie to be bomb. I, I want know. people to be like, yo, wow, what? Yep. You know, that's the way you want to live your life. So I guess that was a good uh, segue into uh, starting off a conversation. This wh- this has come up. What is this like? Uh, what do they call it? Like in group settings? Um, like a warm up? Mm-hmm. Icebreaker? Yep, yeah, this icebreaker. is what? <laughs> 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 yep. <laughs> it's the icebreaker. <laughs> Robin and I need an icebreaker for doing something new. And it's not new. It's a derivative of what we've already been doing, but just changing up the routine to be more formal and more, um, I don't want to say business like, but more uh, prepared to share it. Yep. So we've been keeping our stuff to ourselves. Mm-hmm. But now I've, I've, we both feel like it's in our heart to like share. Like we've been sharing on TikTok too. Yep. Hey y'all, we've been sharing on <laughs> we've been sharing on TikTok too, but we want to put it more on a solidified wax where it can reach more people. Yep. And we don't know who will re- resonate with us, but that's not our that's not our call. Our call is to answer the call and just share. There you go. It 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 it, it, it find who who needs to find it. Yep. Exactly. Okay, so I was talking to somebody earlier, and it seems like every time I talk to these individuals is always confusion. It's something that rocked them and shook them to the point where they're not functioning. Yep. They're reacting and responding. Mm-hmm. And it's like hysteria. And I guess I was just feeling like, how do people let other people affect them in such a way where it just disrupts their day? It just disrupts everything that they're doing. Like somebody's like a storm mm-hmm. and they come in create a tornado around everything and everybody and now by everyone's reacting or responding to what this person said or did and it just got me thinking like being on the outside looking into that situation i did fall victim to that a lot mm-hmm. where somebody can just do something and like a switch my my i'm in my feelings and i'm reacting and i'm mad too and yep. i'm spreading the discontent that i felt to somebody else and it's just a cycle and a spiral that just keeps going and going and i just don't know how to tell somebody how to express like i guess my gratitude for seeing it that type of stuff for what it is now mm-hmm. and also not feeling bad for individuals but i'm a little sad in a way because i can't say anything yep what do you think about that? Yeah, that's interesting. So to me, it's when you're on your life journey and you understand that you're on your life's journey, you go through phases of life where, like you're saying, you've been in that place where, you know, like things like we, we just talked about this, where things can affect you that's outside of you, which literally that's that place where every day, which every every day we live everything can can has an ability to affect us that's not inside of us but to understand is to understand that we have if you have control of your own mind and you understand that you can't control anything outside of you yes those circumstances are going to come about outside of you and if you let it in it will affect you but if you understand to let those circumstances be let them happen and understand you can't control them they'll just pass 
But what we do is, like you said, you we get attached and we, we get sucked in, and now we're now we're a part of the storm. And like you said, we're passing it on to people that, like, you could be on the phone with somebody that's going yeah, through a storm. Exactly. <laughs> the it's storm transfers away. through the phone, yeah, and it affects people in the room with you it's that energy. weren't even on the phone. It's an energy transfer. It's a negative <laughs> energy transfer. There you go. And what I'm saying is, like, for me, like now, is like definitely like having that armor of God and. A part of that is like that that awareness, like where I'm not just reacting and responding to everything I see, hear, or feel because I don't have to accept those feelings. I don't have go. to take on whatever somebody's giving me. I have a choice. That's it. And my choice is to say nothing. Yep. Sometimes just let it let it be let it be like let the let the feelings come. If even if they're so it's interesting because the feelings can be coming f- from an external source, like yeah. another person. Or they can be coming from inside. Like you're, I felt something. Let the feeling, let it be. Let it. Don't try to fight it. Don't try to push it away. Like, if, uh, like if you're talking, I ah, call you. I don't want to talk. No, let it, let it, let them, let it out. Because once it's, once you embrace it, what happens? All right, I'm. A, I'll talk to you. Like, like it's, it has to come out one way or another. Right. And, and we try to. Ah, no, I don't want to hear it. I want to feel it. But sometimes what people will do too, and I, I probably did this too, and I may still do it. I'm, I don't, I don't know. Mm-hmm. But you can literally talk to someone, and they'll dump on you. Yep. And then they're off the phone. And woo, they feel better. They feel better. But then you sitting there sad, <laughs> mopey, angry, hurt. There you go. So sometimes people do use people as an outlet. Yep. And and, and if you're not armed enough to take that on, and if it's going to disrupt your spirits, you have to protect you too. Exactly. So protect your energy. Protect the things you let in because that really does affect you in your household. And the people that you're around. So if you're not strong enough to have that armor where you can hear something, but you don't let it penetrate you, yep. you got to be aware enough to say, you know what? I, I love I you. Do it. I, not, not today. Not, not today. today. Yep. Not today. Exactly. Yeah. And, and that's the thing. The most important person in your life or in my life is me and your life is you. If, if like we talk about, if I can't control myself, I have to say, I have to take a step back because if I don't, like you're saying, if I'm like, no, I have to let them tell me everything. I have to let them dump on me. If it's going to affect me, that's going to affect my life and everything around me, including them. That's going to make their, it's going to make everybody else's life harder if I'm not in control of myself or if I'm not aware of what's affecting me in my own life. Yeah. And awareness is a thing. So like I was saying, this situation, I'm hearing it mm-hmm. and I'm hearing the frustration. Like I couldn't even get it out. Like I, I felt frustration when I first start, even started talking about it. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's, it's just like the awareness of it. I hear it. I take a deep breath, but it, it just makes me sad because you can't tell people like, wait a minute. You don't have to take that on. <laughs> you, you don't have to figure out other people's problems for them. You don't have to create hysteria around one small thing somebody said or did. Mm -hmm. And that's literally what that person probably wants or not even aware enough that that's what they're doing. Exactly. (laughs) And that's really like, that's, that's tough. It's, it's, it's like a a world. Basically we live in a world where most people aren't aware and they're around each other. So it's like, Mm -hmm. it's just a storm of, boom, it's just passing along, boom, boom, boom. And then it just cycles around the, you know, the neighborhood. I mean, like literally a tornado's job, what it, when it comes through things, it picks stuff up, picks it up. Yep. It picks it up. It picks it up. And, and it's just like interesting to me because I innocently made this call on some happy, happy, joy, joy stuff. Mm -hmm. And you won't believe this. There you go. (laughs) Let me tell you about. Yep. And, of course, being polite, it's, I mean, it's two, two ways I could have handled it, right? Yep. Either being polite, oh, tell me what's going on, which I'm I'm open to it now because I feel like I'm aware and, That's it. you know, I'm not going to respond to the thing. Yep. But then it's also the, you know what, um, I'm about to go ahead and cook real quick. Um, let me holler at you. Yep. You know, so it, it just it just depends on the how strong you are in that perspective area. That's it. Yeah, and praying for those that aren't aware and can't see. Yeah, that. that's all you could do. I mean, it's it's everybody's everybody. We're all on our own separate journeys, and unfortunately, like I was saying, if you're at it doesn't no no place is higher or lower or better or worse. It just is what it is. 
it's just to me it's like you were saying it's a blessing to be literally where like for me where i am in my life right now is the biggest blessing in the world because this is this is it it's like i, I i'm here i'm not there i'm not there where i was i'm not where i'm going to be i'm yeah. literally where i am right now and that's that's the most important thing to to remember yeah yeah and it's just like the gratitude of it all like i have gratitude for me seeing situations for what it is and being in a space where i'm aware where i'm not responding and reacting but then there's also the empathetic side of me i wish i could do more for people mm -hmm. so advice that i have for situations like that is to uh, listen if you can yep or protect your energy if you can't yep pray for those to get awareness and perspective mm -hmm. and just be supportive as you can sometimes support is just listening yep and not responding but if you don't have that capacity to do it like you're still working on yourself and you're triggered by it mm -hmm. just just be honest with yourself like i can't take this on like sometimes we go into situations airing like they're not gonna bother me yep they're not you know i'm, I'm who they're not they're not bothering me or mm -hmm. or even you could go in a situation like they're not gonna talk to me like that yep that's exactly how they go and talk to you. And then next thing you know, you you're popping off or you're triggered. Yep. So, yeah, it's kind of like just understanding and having discernment of the different situations that you find yourself in where it can affect your energy. So I think that's a, a part two conversation. But, yeah, yeah, I was just like in awe of just how bad other people can make people feel. Mm-hmm. And it's almost like a emotional manipulation, like like a way to control people, like with their emotions. Like I'm a I'm a I'm a I'm gonna make us I'm gonna make a scene, mm -hmm. and now we gotta baby you or calm you down or not step on your toes because you're gonna get upset. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you gotta let that person like be a crybaby, and 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 do it. You can't you can't you can't literally like with kids. You cannot every time you have a tantrum does not mean that, that you respond. There you go. And in, in life, people really do have tantrums, and we find ourselves coddling or dismissing, and sometimes you just got to let it happen. That's it. The, the quicker you realize what is happening and are able to let it happen, the quicker it will end. Like, And that's the thing. That's what I was saying. We, we want to avoid. We want to hang up the phone you know we want to get away no, I, i'm going this way when it's the storm is coming at you but if you walk towards it you'll see that it's not real it's 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 deeper than you know it's, it's just surface the, on the surface it looks ah everything looks scary on the surface it does. as the closer you get to it you're like it's, it's like a haunted house it's, this is people. This is people right. dressed up. It's not even, oh, I'm scared. Oh, oh, okay, I get it. It's not, you know. But what about those uh, <laughs> people that do that type of thing where they emotional, um, emotionally manipulate you? Like, they'll have this tantrum and mm -hmm. you come running to the rescue or you'll coddle them or not step on their toes. Mm -hmm. Like, how do you deal with the, uh, it's almost like a, I don't want to call it like addiction, but you know, like uh, you cut them off That's, and then yeah. they start projecting and now you're a bad person because you're not supporting their, you know, their toxic behavior. Yep. Like, how do you deal with that? So, you know, it's funny. So it, the, when you were speaking just now, it reminded me of the Mike Epps part <laughs> on the stand up when he was. You got bah, bah, bah. <laughs> <laughs> and she went, well, wait a minute, what you do? <laughs> <laughs> that that it got her attention and got her to, <laughs> to pick up the phone. <laughs> but That's he went crazy. through all that roller coaster That's of. He, but he uh, stepped it up. Exactly, he, he had up. the he whatever. It, and, up. And, and and to understand, it's funny, funny to to understand is to say. Literally, that's why life is all about patience, right? So to be patient means that it's literally to sit back because it's a life is a roller coaster just as just as much as emo emotions are a roller coaster. So his his emotions were zhoo, he was he was being nice and he was being mean and he you know he, t he stepped it up. He he was trying to do whatever it took Every, to get the whatever, reaction. That's that's <laughs> like that analogy. If y'all haven't seen that special, we're gonna tag we gotta oh, tag man. the cat. No, we got to tag the uh, Mark Twain Mark and, Twain. A, and a Mike Epps and video Mike, yep. uh, clip below so they can see what we're talking about. <laughs> but it's just the the emotional manipulation of he was doing whatever it took. Whatever it took. And sometimes people, when they figure out the thing that gets your goat, mm -hmm. they going to use that against you. Every time. Till you get yourself together. There you go. Like, they're not going to change. Yep, Never. 
Never. You, you're gonna you're gonna have to change how you re- react and respond to it, or at least acknowledge what they're doing. Mm-hmm. You've seen I've been exposed. Like you know this thing's bo- this thing bothers me, right? Yep. So you, since you know this thing bothers me, you're gonna do whatever it takes to get my attention. Good, bad, or ugly, that's it, that's and that's gonna be, it. and that's really pu- 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 pulling out the big guns. That's and that's that's all life. Like as human beings, that's literally all we are. That's what we do. We all we're trying to do is get your attention. And like again, another reference <laughs> in Kung Fu Panda. Remember, Kung Fu Panda, the guy at, on the four Kung Fu Panda four. <laughs> four. <laughs> He was holding that over his head. He uh, said, your, his parents left him or something. Oh, the little, the little yeah, bunny. His, his, his dad, your dad left you. He he was trying uh, to yes. hold that over his yes. head. And once he, he got it, over yeah. that, he yeah. said, I, there's nothing I can hold over. I can't, yeah. I can't control you anymore. Right, right, that's, right. You know. So basically, we did all this jibber jabber to get to the meat and potatoes of what Robert is talking about right now. You that's basically, it. like, you can tell we're married because <laughs> he interpreted my blah, 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 blah. <laughs> <laughs> like literally it took us like 25 minutes to get what I was saying and he had to explain it that's sure. crazy so I don't know we might have to edit what I was talking about because <laughs> you, you 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 get what I'm saying that's it you get that's... what I'm saying so yeah. so this is probably like another topic within itself like the things that you are triggered by mm-hmm. your areas of opportunity it's gonna always come back to you in some form shape or size it could be a person a situation yep that's going to trigger you. And it's not it, a person can't manipulate a person that's strong here. That's it. Once right? you, like you said, once you let go you gotta of it. whatever it is, they can't, I, what about this? You're like, that's, it doesn't bother. Ah, dang, I guess I don't. I don't have anything. Right. I can't. I can't hold that over you. I can't dangle it anymore. Right. Like you if know, you're right. if you're if you're honest to God, not insecure about whatever the thing is. Yep. They can't dangle it over you. That's like it. the Mike up situation. If yep. they, in that same scenario, if old girl was over him, mm-hmm. all that crazy stuff wouldn't work. It wouldn't. Uh, <laughs> it was. Uh, remember. So it's funny. Like we just talked about. It's all made. It's not real. Him, he was pretending. He's like, bah, 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 like he was. <laughs> it was pretend. He wasn't actually doing it, but he was trying to make it real to get that reaction. That's all. It's nothing real, but we. It looks ah oh, that. And I, you get up. We get upset. I'm mad. It wasn't even as. It didn't. It looked bad. Worse than it was. Yeah. <laughs> Always. Like. But you. But you know what? And this is kind of like in the same wheelhouse though. Like some people are attached and enjoy drama mm-hmm. and toxic behavior like so. oh this person loves me because they went pop 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 mm-hmm. you know what I mean? exactly so yep. it's it could be an area where you're not even like you're so comfortable and not even knowing it's it's toxic because of you're not exposed to anything different yep and you don't and you don't know that things can be expressed differently. So mm-hmm. if you only know love, for instance, one way, and it's always been expressed this way, like you can't really grow out of it until you expand your mind or expand your exposure to something different. So that's a whole can of worms that's right there because wild, you got to be able to be open yep. and you have to be self-aware. You have to have areas of opportunity where you need to work on. So if you, if you, if you don't think you need work, you're never going to see it. There you go. So, you, you, you like, and that's most ninety nine percent of people. They we we know as human beings, we know everything. We don't need help. We can figure it out. We're going to work hard for our money, and we don't understand that in life to let go and let God. What does that mean? That means literally, don't try to control anything. Just literally let it be. And once you let it be, let life be. It will be beautiful because you're not in. Char- you know you're not in charge. You you're literally you, you're almost getting like like a king getting carried around on a throne because you're not fighting it. You're not resisting it. You're just, just let go. And then, yeah. oh, well, now it's all working out. It's not working out. Like In our minds, we have a way we think life should go like this or like that. But it ne- it's, not, ne- it's never going to go any way but the way it's supposed to go. And once we let go and understand that, it's beautiful. Yeah. Yeah, so it's, it's so many layers. Like, I could take from our conversation, like maybe 20 different things that we talked about that we can expand on because Mm -hmm. mindset and being honest with yourself and being able to let go and let God is is really a thing because like the situation I was explaining earlier, a person will say, 
this person is like that Mm -hmm. or they're irresponsible so i have to help them yep or you know just making it like it's almost like a side a part of them wants to do it exactly because they're addicted to it it. and they've always been that person's savior and sometimes it's a safety net too to want to want to feel wanted even if it's toxic that's it so you know that's that's the whole thing too it's it's a it's a ta- like you said it's attached where we're attached to that feeling to like you said be needed but the reality of it is it will it will work itself out whether we're there or not and it's no it won't yes it will <laughs> I mean it always has we feel like well since I was there no this well you didn't have part of, I mean it's good that you were there but if you weren't it would have went however it went <laughs> yeah and honestly some relationships are built on that toxic type of behavior like you use me i get used i complain about being used and then mm-hmm. i apologize to for using you then i'm back and then we back to square one boom yep. i feel used you use you know what i mean That's like it. you cheat on me i cheat on you we get back together we cheat on you you cheat on me we get back together forget you we're gonna break up now we are, we are <laughs> like nobody's truly working nobody's truly changing or working nope. on themselves it's, just going in, it's a cycle yeah, it's, it's a, a cycle, cycle of life and and it's and, and like, why is it so hard? I don't life is so hard. Well, I mean, yeah, <laughs> yeah, because it could be on both perspectives. Like some people can agree to be like like they're skating through life on 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 not growing, mm-hmm. and they're both okay with it. Yep. But both sad at the same time. Yep. Both doing things to cover that mess. Yep. Up. You know, like just like numb to it. Yep, exactly. You know what I mean? Like it's not it's not healing. Yep. You just numb to it. You go through this go through the cycles and then you numb yourself out and you go through yep. it again. So, you know, that's some codependent And that's and that's how you know it's an issue. Like that's the thing. We don't you know, we don't want to admit anything as human beings. Oh, I'm good. I can I'm okay if, if if I do this thing. Everybody does it. Well, I can do this. You know, like well, I, I it's nothing wrong that I like to, wait, which we're wait. talking about drinking. Well, yeah, but okay, okay, like, um, yeah, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna push back or anything. I'm just gonna go take a smoke break. Yep, is that? I'm just, or, I'm, I'm just, not, I'm, take just a smoke I'm just break, not gonna come know. home. Yep, I'll just go to the bar, go hang out. That's that's how I'm, it's I'm like. It's nothing it. wrong. That's okay. But to and then this is the thing to understand is to say. What happened if you? What would happen if you didn't take that smoke break? Uh, I, I can stop if I wanted. That's what we tell her. Yeah. I can stop. I can stop anytime. But what if you actually did? Uh, well, I, don't, you, you, I don't want to. Because you're gonna have to deal with your stuff if you do. <laughs> there you go. Nobody you wants to it. deal with their stuff. You said it. You got it. You you have to. So you to remember, we stuff. just talked about this. Hmm. Remember, we talked about. I talked about people that go to jail or go to prison, right? For the most part. Eight, there's no smoke breaks. There's no there's no bars. You so you literally, you literally sitting there with your own mind, and like you said, you got to deal with your own stuff. You have to sit back and say, "Wow, what what do I do now? Like now, I don't have anything to turn to. Now you yeah. got to figure it. Now you oh. gotta you gotta figure it out." And this probably is something different, but I will say this too: people expect, which we know, people expect the other person to change <laughs> without changing themselves. So. <laughs> Like for the scenario of this person gets on my nerve, so therefore I smoke Yep. to cope. But instead of understanding yourself and what about you that's making this person get on your nerve, yes. you just smoking to numb the pain away. Like you're yes. self-medicating to numb the pain away instead mm-hmm. of figuring out your stuff. Yep. And you can't figure out your stuff because you're not even acknowledging that you play a part in it. That's it. Sometimes we get get a little arrogant and a little feeling ourselves like I've done nothing to this person. There you go. I've, I, I'm right in this situation. Um, they need to. They need to. They, they need, need to stop change. tripping. Yep. That's that's literally how we talk. <laughs> they need they to didn't. stop this. I didn't do nothing. This this all them. I, what I didn't do nothing. So and then and remember, like we talk about. So in those situations, two people together, I'm done with them. I, I left them. Now I have somebody else. And over time, now they're tripping. Now, now they're getting on my nerves. What do you know? Like you said, the the outside influence will ne- will always be different. If we don't change on the inside, the outside will always affect us. N- nothing is going to change in your life because 
if you're still triggered, if you still have areas of opportunity that are not healed, mm -hmm. if you're not self-aware, you're going to magically find yourself into these situations where you're back where you started. Yep. Just got new characters. There you go. Same you, <laughs> new characters. New, new, it's a new and scene. Now, now it's a new Let's, scene. I know. It's a different person Let's, here. Okay, you replaced Susie. There. Now here comes Becky. <laughs> I ain't getting on my nerves too. Like it's, it's, it's never, it's never ending. <laughs> like you said, if you don't, if you don't change on the inside, your life it's gonna be a. Hard, I mean, literally, that's why people. God, it's so, I don't understand. Like I'm struggling. Like 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 it's literally that's the thing. But like you said, we don't. No, it's their fault. It's everybody else's fault. If they didn't do this, then I wouldn't be feeling oh, yeah. comfortable, and I wouldn't have to do this. But they, they're making me. And like I always talk about. The key to life, like, it's, it's interesting because it's kind of like what goes back to what we were talking about a little while ago. To make that phone call when no expectations, you don't know how it's going to be. But if it were a, a conversation where it's like, well, okay, I've been through this before. To, to make that call knowing it could be that, that's another level because it's literally going into a situation where you could be uncomfortable. So exposing yourself to situations like that that helps you grow. The more uncomfortable yeah. we are, yeah. the more we, okay, now this, now, I'm, I, now, like say if you're sitting uncomfortable and you're like, okay, this works. Now you're comfortable with it. Now you, you got to move again because to stay uncomfortable means you're always going to get better at well, whatever the situation yeah, is. Yeah, and being uncomfortable kind of make, makes life exciting because, you know, you, <laughs> like, being not, you know, it's not predictable. Yep. And, and, and when you work on yourself and change yourself, you, I mean, that's the fun of it because everything around you changes. There you go. The way your outlook on life and the way you see things, same characters. Same. It just it looks it looks it looks different. different. It's gonna feel different. Everything looks different, like you said. So the characters, they're just the people. Like in our lives, that's what's interesting too about working on yourself to get better. Nothing. The people are still they're gonna be the same way they were last time you saw them. Still mean or still whatever they were. If I change, though, it's not affecting me. Like, you, there's not nothing to hold over right. my head anymore. Hey, but it don't mean they won't try it, though. No, they, that, you know that's what, you, what they do. Look, this, <laughs> me and I talk about this all the time. Like, you go somewhere and people bring up bring up the good old days. That's it. About what you're doing, how you used to do it, and yep. and then want to break up your past and throw yep. it in your face. They're going to hold the dangle that thing. I remember that one time. Yeah. <laughs> or, or, or try that trigger that you're healing from mm -hmm. just to see. Yep. You know, it, that's just the way, but that's just the test of life. Like when you, if you could come out of that without a battle scar. That's it. Oh, man. We could come out of there and still have your peace. Yes. So like Robert said, you got to put yourself in situations yeah. where it's uncomfortable. Oh, like, so God. say if it's a person that you just can't stand being around and you, you go and you mm -hmm. hold your peace. It doesn't mean you're not going to get attacked. You're gonna, you're gonna get attacked because whatever the thing was is a part of you, right? So you healed, you still got a little scar. You still you still have memories, but it's up to you to understand like, this no longer bothers me or affects me, or even if it does, you are able to hold your peace, at least. You're able to, so it's, it's literally like, so like you said it, it doesn't, it really doesn't matter how the situation, you can, you can literally revert back to your old self and have a issue and flip out. But you expose yourself, like to put yourself, like the Brene Brown, Brene Brown book, yeah. The Power of Vulnerability. You put yourself out there, which is literally like it's taking off a layer, even though it didn't, it didn't go 100% the way you wanted it to. But you still put yourself out there, and you're yeah. you yeah, get and comfortable you got, doing that. And you that. got you got levels of growth too. So you, like exactly. growth is not like a yes or no, on or off, 100% or <laughs> you know, it's not like that. Growth is exactly. gradual. So some like like you said like you put yourself in those situations, but also you could just find yourself in those situations, it's, oh, and that's oh, the true test. You, that's that's the that's uh, the other test. thing. The other thing is to and this is just my opinion. In my opinion, it's best to put yourself uh, to, when you understand what's happening in life. It makes sense to put yourself in those situations where you're uncomfortable because, like you just said. Whether you put yourself in them or not, you're gonna be put in them. This is just how life works. You're just gonna magically, how did I didn't know they was gonna be here? Yep, that's just how life works. You're gonna be in a situation where you didn't want to be. So the more like to me, if we just force ourselves to be in the weather, it doesn't matter how it goes. But like you like you were saying, 
It could it, it didn't go as bad as it went the last time. Even if it's just a little bit better, it, that's still a little bit better, and that's the the path towards whatever you think is yeah. great. You know what I mean? Like yeah. So <laughs> I would say for me, like as I was finding myself um, going through a season of growth that I had no idea I was growing because I thought I was going through it. Mm-hmm. Um, I will find myself like you know how we talked about like um, I'm reacting and responding. And I'm I, I'm I'm self aware in hindsight. Yep. So I'm already going off. Mm-hmm. I'm already reacting and responding. But then it's me looking at me like, no, stop, <laughs> come back, come back. Yep. And with that growth cycle, I will still find myself in, the, in a hamster wheel of like, why am I reacting and responding to this? And then as I got more closer to being self aware, eventually that feisty react respond nature that I was having thank you God for helping me with this but mm-hmm. I was I found myself fighting less yep responding less there you go and my spirit got a little more calm mm-hmm. not to say was not what's going on on the inside but it was some level of self-awareness where I stopped yep and then all of a sudden now I'm hearing and now I don't have that internal like urge mm-hmm. to pop off. Now I'm a little bit calm, but that took time. Yep. So sometimes those situations like Robert was talking about, like you find yourself over and over and over again. The best thing you could do for yourself is maybe journal mm-hmm. to remember why yep. or ask yourself the questions of why I did, not what they did. There you go. They didn't. Why did they deserve that? They had it coming. No. Yep. What did you do? There you go. Why did you have to respond? Why can't you show that person grace? What are they going through? Like you have to examine a situation or a scenario or your trigger from both perspectives or sides. You might feel like something or somebody or what whatever thing is coming for you, mm-hmm. but you could just be defensive. Yep. You don't know. You don't, you we don't, don't know. We, you know, us, us, yeah, it's it's so being open it. minded. It's <laughs> like, okay, where could it's always it's always on the inside, like where could I have been better? Because in the long run, the better I the more it's it's like literally the better I am every day, the better the it is for is. everybody yes. around. You know what I mean? Yes. The world yes. is better. And that goes back to that thought of like, we expect the person to change. Mm-hmm. So for me and my journey and what I've learned from following God closer, like having a relationship with God is what I know is like my level of growth in Christ is not reflective of people that I encounter. So yep. for me to say, hey, I expect you to treat me or act like this to me or not do this to me or how could you why would you Mm -hmm. if if i just got to a point where i'm acknowledging the fact that i have the possibility of being wrong or i didn't have that love in my heart before and i'm expecting that from you that's not fair yep that's not fair so sometimes we have to take responsibility and be the bigger person or the light in the situation Mm -hmm. things don't get diffused with two people fighting somebody got to be the bigger person somebody has to say stop Somebody has to say, okay, you're right. Yep. Somebody has to say, I forgive you. Mm-hmm. But if it's two people tussling and feel entitled to that apology or have the last say or say the last word or you wronged me and I wronged you back, I got my li-, like that type of stuff, like that's never going to end right. It's, just a, it's a cycle. It like, is a cycle. It's a cycle it's of a, destruction and yeah, it is. nobody's aware. And, and it, this is the thing. It only takes one person and that's like we're like we're talking about. So if one person were to become aware and understand yeah, it that it's that one, on the it inside, one person, yeah. nothing will change. Like literally, the, everything will be the same except for what's inside that person, right? So, so say if you have a person on the outside looking in, they'd be like, Yours, "It still looks like from my perspective, it still looks horrible." But that person would be like, "I'm good." Like I. I see what's happening. Even if you're you're saying you know, you you apologize, they're still not, they're still right right right. If you understand, it's like, well, I mean, it's not like yeah. a deal. It's well, like, you just, but if you're, if you don't understand, you're frustrated. You're like, man, I don't know. I don't get it. To get it is to say, ah, yeah. I said I was sorry. You know, like, but oh, it's, man, it's power. Know. It's power and forgiveness <laughs> and it's power in releasing it. So yes. if somebody, for instance, if somebody did something wrong to me, I don't, you know, I'm not picking out just anything. I'm just saying like. If somebody did something wrong, and mm-hmm. in my heart of hearts, in my heart of hearts, like, I forgive you. Mm-hmm. I don't feel any way about it. Yep. And however you respond to me, like you said, putting yourself in that situation. Yep. However you respond to me, 
That does not matter. So, my position is not going to change. Exactly. I'm still going to be nice to you. <laughs> I'm still going to be kind to you. I am still going to be respectful of you, no matter how you treat me, because I have released myself from that. Me go. responding to you means you still got a strong call on me. Mm -hmm. You're still able to trigger me. That means I'm letting you control me, and I refuse to do that. So there is power in releasing yourself from being under somebody's thumb. Yep. You know, like you literally are under somebody's thumb if they're able to get under your skin mm -hmm. or trigger you or say something to make you mad. Yep. Like when you release yourself, you don't feel none of that no more. It's just it's like, okay, I see what you're go. doing. Yep. It's not working. It's not God working. God bless you. There you go. And that's the thing. Like when, when you do that, that what the power of that is like a person really going to have to check themselves. They keep hitting you and you're not responding. It's unnatural to hit something. It's, it's <laughs> unnatural to keep hitting something that's not hitting you back. That's Eventually you don't have to back up. Remember it's on, unnatural. on the Matrix, he, oh, was, he was trying. Yeah, he tried to, he was trying to dodge him. Then he just, he stopped. Yeah, stop fighting with it. He stopped fighting. You got, you got to stop fighting with it. <laughs> he just got in and he just plucked him out. It's nothing. Yeah. It's literally nothing yeah, at that's that a, point. It's Robert, that's a great <laughs> metaphor. That is, Robert got the movies <laughs> and the specials to back it up, okay? But that's, a, that's literally a metaphor. If you're fighting, if you're fighting, yep. you're going to get hit. Yeah, you're trying. Uh, let me, let me, uh, I got to stop him. I have to. You don't you're, gotta you're, stop nothing. You're trying to resist. Stop don't, resisting. Don't resist it. <laughs> Just let it happen. Literally, he went with the flow. And he said, "Oh, yeah." yeah but that's like, that, to me, that's an example of energy, right? So you yes. got the good, the light, mm -hmm. and you got the dark energy. And then as the words come, mm -hmm. and you can't see what's happening here, and you know, in that level, but yep. the light always overcome the dark. So let God fight your battles. If you were nice and you said it with your heart and you are, you got the right heart posture in the spiritual realm, you are winning. You are beasting. You are dominating because that's, that's light. That's God. That's mm -hmm. love. But to tussle, yeah. You're pushing back and forth. You, you and back like and you forth. said, with light, the darkness, the more light, the darkness goes away. Like oh, it that, does. You it can't even, it. It's not yeah. dark anymore. So it it's can't just, be dark. <laughs> it can't be dark. But like what we're talking about is like, uh, I, it's different. It's, that's a whole different level that's of like level. learning and understanding. But you got to walk in it to experience it. That's it. As you walk in it and try to put those principles to practice, you will get wisdom and perspective, mm -hmm. especially if you ask God for it. So try it. Yep. Try to forgive. Write it down. Punch the air if you need to. But yep. that's a good place to start. Hey, you got to start somewhere. Like, you got to start, yeah, somewhere. start somewhere. Yeah. Even if the person did the worst thing to you, it's not up to you. It's, ne it's never. It's and not it's, up to the, you. the thing about it is, with life, it's never the. In is this is that was. It's never the end of the world. It's, it's always more life to live as long as we're still living. So to understand that means, okay, you know what? I'm gonna let it go because I understand that this is a blessing to be here. It doesn't have anything to do with the other person or what they did. I understand my life and I'm blessed to be here. Yeah. I'm grateful for that. It doesn't, the situation yeah. doesn't matter. <laughs> I mean, like, yeah. I'm just grateful to be here. And All it's right. so much time spent being mad. Yes. It's so many things that you, you're not even, like your energy has to be cleared up to receive certain things. So if yep. you're holding that negativity in your heart, mm -hmm. You 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 are essentially blocking your own blessings because you can't see light if you're full of darkness. You got to clear yourself you gotta, up to blurry. receive it. It's, yeah. You got to clear out the take the goggles off. Yeah. <laughs> oh, as well. Wow. I didn't know. You know. You're, you don't even know. You're, <laughs> you're in fight mode and everybody else is not, and yep. you're wondering why you're not getting invited. Mm -hmm. Your energy stank. There you go. You know, nobody. You, you you walk. You carry it. Yep. Even if you're not in that mood, it it affects your whole being. Yep, exactly. It affects everything about you. Yep.